Yeah. It looks great. Left a little bit of the panel on that one, but. This is moving. <laughs> wow, it's a solid looking wall, man. I'm Kathy and that's my husband Rich and I jumping for joy because our concrete retaining walls are finally finished. And that means we are one step closer to covering our energy efficient off-grid earth sheltered dome home before winter. We began building the dome in the spring of 2022 and we were hoping to have it covered before last winter, but the original concrete company that was scheduled to do the walls backed out on us at the last minute. It was a rough winter for both us and the dome. But we all survived and we were excited to find a concrete company willing to do the retaining walls for us this year. They just finished pulling all the forms off, so we thought we would take some time to answer a few of the questions that had been asked about the retaining walls while sharing their build from start to finish. This is an earth sheltered house, so it will be covered with approximately 24 to 30 inches of dirt on the top. The dirt will go away from the dome at about a 60 degree angle. So right next to the dome, it will be about 18 feet deep. We need to hold back that dirt. Without those walls, the dirt would spill around and potentially block doors and windows into the house. So this is the floor plan for our basic house. And as you can see, we have three end walls. These are the flat walls at the ends of the domes. First, there's the main entry, which has a retaining wall on each side. These walls reach a height of about 12 feet, including the footer. Then there's the utility room, which as we explained in a past video, is the bane of our build. These walls reach a height of about 20 feet, including the footer. It's these very high walls that intimidated a lot of the concrete companies we reached out to. On the west side, the wall actually connects to the north entry wall, creating what we now refer to as the pit. And lastly, we have the south walls. These are about 13 feet high and were going to be a combination of concrete and stone, but we've decided to forego the concrete completely and go with all boulders instead.
these walls are very complex and the complexity depends upon how high each wall is. As the walls get taller, the footers also get larger. And the larger the walls and the footers, the heavier the number rebar required and the closer the spacing is between them. And of course, the bigger and larger the walls and footers, the more expensive they become. We did have other options for the lower walls, such as using boulders or stacked rock. However, we didn't have a lot of options for the high walls on either side of the utility room, and that meant that we didn't have a lot of options where the pit is, so we also had to do the walls for the entry. However, you may have noticed that they aren't exactly the same as the plans because we did limit them as much as we could to save some money. But of course, we'll be making up the missing part of the walls with boulders as needed to make sure the dirt is held back. Utility room walls are very complicated. They are so high they had to be built and pumped in two stages. For the first stage of pumping, they built the forms to a height of 12 feet so that they could make sure all the nooks and crannies would be filled with concrete. At 12 feet high, they only poured the east utility wall and the walls enclosing the pit because they used a full cement truck. That's 11 cubic yards or 22 tons of concrete in the first 12 feet of those three walls alone. The entryway pit wall was done, but they needed to still build the utility room walls higher on each side. But these were made even more complicated by the fact that they have a 712 pitch to match the pitch of our roof, which also happens to match the pitch of the dirt as it will move away from the dome after the backfilling. Combine all the crazy construction, the multiple pumping, with the amount of rain received here in July alone, and, well, time flies, doesn't it?
The second pump required a partial truckload of about six yards to fill the two tops of the utility room walls and the entire right side entry wall. Combine that with the first two full truckloads and we have a grand total of 27 cubic yards. That's 54 tons of concrete in the retaining walls, including the footers alone. That's a lot of concrete. Those walls aren't going anywhere. Yep. It looks great. Left a little bit of the panel on that one, but how you coming over there? I'm... This is moving. <laughs> you had me concerned for a second. <laughs> Wow, it's a solid looking wall, man. Yeah, it is. Let's get. Nice and flat, nice and straight. Easy. Tell my wife I do some of my best work and when I'm on the edge of disaster. We are extremely happy with the way the walls turned out and we are excited to get started with the waterproofing, insulation, and backfilling with dirt before winter. Please like and subscribe, join us on our journey, and we'll see you in the next video. I'm Kathy and my husband Rich and I are creating a simpler life in the Adirondacks, but simple doesn't mean easy. Aww. <laughs> 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 Valiant effort, Rich. <laughs>